Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you very much. Sheikh, last time we were discussing uh, wudu and um, you know, what, what invalidates the wudu. Can you explain to us the conditions that actually validate wudu? Insha'Allah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. In order for the wudu to be validated um, and accepted, there are 14 conditions that must be met for the wudu to be accepted. The first condition is that the water that is used for the wudu must be tahir and pure. Okay. We cannot actually use a najis water, a non-pure water, for the purpose of having the wudu. Because as I've mentioned before, that the acts of wudu and such like the ghusl, these are ibadah, these are parts of the worship. So to, in order to have um, an accepted worship, you must also accept and abide by the rules of that worship. And for the case of the wudu, for example, and even ghusl, the water must be tahir and pure from any impurity and najasa, be it urine or blood and such like. So that's the first condition, to be able for us to uh, begin the, the salah, the prayers. So, Shagna, one would argue, what is pure water? How do we know what is pure water? Is it safe to say, as long as you call it water and it's drinkable, that's, that's, wudu, uh, that's pure water and that is what you can use for wudu? Well, the difference in, in Sharia that they would differentiate between uh, those two types of water. You have both of them, let's say both cups are pure. But imagine that if somebody's hand was stained with blood, for example. Okay. And he puts his finger inside that cup. Although you don't see uh, the change of color. But because the shara' says that the no little, little bit yeah. of water that is there in the cup was in touch with najasa, uh -huh. it makes the whole water najis. Okay, so that's to do with the... So you can't the drink it, even, even uh, for the use, for own use, for example. For yes. drinking, for example, you can't drink it, it's najis. So even if the water, for example, I've got my glass here, even it looks... Fine, it probably exactly. smells fine, it probably tastes fine as well. Exactly. But because it has come into contact with Nijasa, exactly. we cannot use this for wudu. Exactly. So we have to make sure we use uh, always pure water. Now, the second condition with regard to uh, the wudu to be valid is to use also uh, mutlaq water. In other words, to, to use only pure water. So we can't actually use uh, mixed water, or as it's called mudaf, mm -hmm. to use pu uh, pure water and not to use mixed water. In other words, we cannot use, for example, rose water or, okay. for example, grape juice or, or orange juice okay. to actually uh, perform the wudu. It has to be only water, nothing else, clear water. So, Sheikhna, if someone uh, has been praying for three or four years, Unless he's been using rose water, it smells nice. I want to smell nice in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you saying that that person has to re-perform three, four years worth of salah? Unfortunately, they have to repeat because uh, in this particular mas'ala and rule, we have two things, what is called as the ilmi condition and the haqiqi condition, the knowledge-based condition and the reality condition. Now, the knowledge based is based on your knowledge. Some ahkam, if you don't know and you did it, it's okay, they will, they will actually pass it on. But some ahkam, no, even if it's, if it's uh, you did it in, in somehow, and it was actually, uh, it was actually in, in the reality, in the real world, in the real world, it was wrong. Wudu with rose water, wudu with, the, for example, with orange juice, in reality, it's not accepted. It's not a wudu. So, uh, for this scenario, for this case, you have to actually repeat all the uh, prayers, unfortunately. Yes. Please continue. Um, 
with regard to the third condition to have the wudu validated for the cause of the prayers and other ibadat is to make sure that um, the, the space, the location and the water itself is mubah. We have the issue of usurped, usurped mm -hmm. lands, usurped the water and usurped properties. We have to make sure that because, again, because the wudu is ibadah and worship, I have to make sure that when I use that uh, piece of land or that washroom or that particular water in the tap, that they must not be usurped by somebody else or by myself. So you're saying that um, if I am going to pray somewhere, I can't just pick a position, someone's front garden or land that belongs to someone, private land. I can't pray on there without the owner's permission. This is classified as usurping? Exactly. The hukum of usurp, ghasub comes on it. So you have to make sure that you ask permission beforehand, mm -hmm. before you start your wudu or even a prayer. And then if they give you the permission, that's fine. You can do the wudu and, and prayers. Otherwise, the wudu is not accepted and the salah as well. Also, the water that's used for wudu. Um, I can't, for example, if, there's, if I'm in the public and there's a fountain there, I know the water is, is pure, it's not najis. I can't use that water to do wudu. If it's publicly uh, available for everyone use, that's fine. Let's say the well uh, for the whole village, for example. Everyone is coming and, and making use of the water. That's fine. But if that well was in, in the territory of somebody, of somebody's house, for example, who dug that well for himself and his family, then we cannot use it. So it's more mainly private, private uh, use. I, th I think in the West where we live, uh, a lot of houses have a tap outside. You know, these for watering the garden or washing the cars. There's a tap outside. We can't go to that tap and open it, do wudu, close it. Unless you ask permission, of course. Okay. That belongs to that property and, and the owner of that, of that property and the, the landlord. Thank you. Um, even though when you actually do the wudu, let's say you are doing the wudu in a land, a usurped land, that drops of water from your face or from your arms, that drops on that land, usurped land is haram as well. Number four, we have to make sure that, again, that container or the bucket we use for the um, purpose of the wudu is also mubah and permissible. So sometimes, you know, it's not just to do with usurped land or water. Sometimes the bucket that I use, that jug that I use to uh, fill it with water and, and make it used for the ghusl for the or, or wudu, that bucket must also be uh, permissible and mubah allowed to be used, not to be usurped. Again, if I use it, then this is ishkal with regard to. So you're the wudu. saying the land can't be usurped, the water can't be usurped, and any other tools or instruments used. Tools, utensils, uh, exactly. In the wudu cannot uh, be usurped. Vessels and everything, they all must be mubah and allowed to be used and permissible. Awesome. Number five, also. Again, we go back to the issue of the silver and gold. So we're not allowed to use a vessel or a utensil or a bucket or a jug which is made of gold or silver to use it for the purpose of the wudu. Again, we have to make sure that we use just normal, normal buckets or jugs for, for this purpose because, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, we cannot use anything that is made of gold or uh, silver that we can drink or eat with. Um, that's haram, of course, for the eating and drinking, and also uh, covers the ghusl and wudu as well. So we have to make sure they're not silver or gold made. Shaykhna, is one allowed to perform wudu before the salah time, or does it have to be at the salah time itself? Well, you can actually prepare yourself for uh, the salah time by doing the wudu, let's say one or two hours before the Adhan time. But you have to make sure that the intention of being in the state of wudu, being pure, uh, being, being tahir, that's the important thing because that the time of the Salah hasn't been yet arrived. So you can't just do the wudu for the purpose of praying in that time, restricting the intention within that time. So we just say, 
I mean, I do the wudu qurbat in Allah Ta'ala for the purpose of Allah to be in a state of tahara and purity. So that's fine. Um, let's move to the next condition of uh, the wudu. Um, it is important for, for the sixth condition that the parts of the body which belongs to the wudu, the areas of the wudu, they must be tahir and pure. Okay. So let's say if you wounded your hand and there's a blood on your hand, for example, you have to make sure you wash uh, that najasa from your hands or arms or face or head or both feet. And they are pure and tahir, then you can do the wudu. Otherwise, you cannot do um, wudu on the parts which are najis. Um, you can't actually um, do wudu because that will make the wudu void and eventually the salah will be also void because you did the wudu on the body which was najis. The next condition, which is number seven, you have to make sure that there is enough time for the salah when you do the wudu. Especially those who wake up a bit late, mm. almost five, four minutes to the sunrise. Um, if you think that you won't make it if you do the wudu, you know, some people do wudu for two, three minutes, mm -hmm. and it's only five minutes left. And part of the salah will be out of the time. Um, so in this case, the hukum changes to tayammum. So the one should do tayammum instead of uh, the wudu. Okay. But if the person thinks that if I go and find some clay or soil from the garden and try to do the time, that will take more time than the wudu, then uh, you do the wudu, which is better. Because it's, it's faster oh. as well. But otherwise, if you have next to your bed, for example, uh, a bit of clay you know, wrapped in a clothes, for example, you just open it, do the time in, in maybe 10 seconds, and then you start your pray, prayer straight, straight away, then that's fine. Otherwise, if the timings are the same or the wudu takes less time, then you do the wudu. Very informative. Um, the next condition, which is number eight, is to make sure that when you perform the wudu, you begin the wudu with the intention of the qurba, for the cause okay. of Allah. Because wudu is ibadah, it's part of the ibadah and worship. So we have to make sure that when we actually... Um, do the wudu, we do it for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the intention has to be correct. Exactly, for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qurbat in Allah ta'ala. You seek nearness, nearness to Allah with this wudu. And you have to make sure that it's not for the purpose of, let's say, to cool down your body parts. Okay. Or just to, you know, make yourself wet, for example, just hands wet. So. Or even uh, cleaning. Exactly. Um, to clean your, your face, for example, from the dirt. The intention should be the initial intention should be what uh, for the purpose of Allah. I do this wudu for the cause of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And this niya and intention should stay all the way from the the first uh, minute or the seconds you you began the wudu all mm. the way to the end of the wudu. So that's important that you keep the intention going on and non-stop. Um, the next. Uh, condition is that, which is number nine, that you have to make sure when you do the wudu, you have to have the pure intention. So no riya, not to show off or okay. to actually show to the others that I know who the wudu. The tenth condition and the eleven, they're almost linked together. Now the, the tenth condition that you have to make sure that you do the wudu, According to the sequence, so you begin with the face, and then the right arm, and then the left arm, and then you, you wipe your head, and then you wipe uh, both feet. So you have to make sure that you follow the sequence. You can't just start from the left arm, and then right arm, and then you jump to the wipe, and then you wash your face afterwards. You have to follow the sequence, otherwise if you uh, ignore the sequence, the wudu will be batil and, and void. Awesome. Just a question, Sheikhna. Um, Let's say that I am disabled or I have some sort of um, injury that I can't perform wudu. I need help. I need aid. Am I allowed to, you know, uh, have someone there to help me perform wudu? 
You see, the 13th condition for the wudu is that uh, the one who does the wudu must do it himself. So nobody is allowed to aid me, to assist me in terms of wiping my head, for example, or washing the face. It's only me who must do uh, these acts. For those who are disabled and can't actually do them, um, they have to try their best. If they can raise their hand, for example, towards their face, they, they can just actually wipe their face, for example. Um, to an extent that they can, they can actually do it, that's fine. I mean, they can do it, they can do it. Otherwise, in some cases, you have to raise their hands, for example. You aid them to wash their face, for example. Th these are exceptional circumstances. So, otherwise, we have to wash ourselves uh, for, the, for the washing parts and wipe ourselves with our own, own hands. Now, the next condition, which is the 14th condition and last condition of the wudu to be validated is the, the one who does the wudu must make sure that there's no obstacles, uh, nothing that prevents the reach of water to the skin, the face, the arms, um, and the place of, of masah, of, of, of wiping. For the minor dirts, let's say the dust that goes around uh, in the street, for example, that dust doesn't really prevent if it's really thin and a few on the face or on, on both arms. And usually it's washed when there's water running, it's washed, washed away. But paint, uh, let's say um, so stickers, some, and some, so something forth. that's waterproof. Exactly, yeah. It normally exactly. causes a barrier, an issue. Yeah, exactly. Sheikh Man, what about, um, like you said, dirt and dust, but what about the dirt that we have on our skins, the dirt, especially in our fingernails? Does that prevent us from doing well? Does that prevent water from touching? Well, if somebody has a fingernail and they cut that uh, nail, let's say, every week, they have to make sure that there's no dirt left after cutting the nail because the subject of the nail is that if it's, if it's uh, long enough, then you don't have to wash the inside skin. But when you cut it off, that skin now is visible. Now you have to, now the, the, the subject has changed, the hukum has changed. Okay. Now, now you have to wash it. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure there's no dirt when it's being cut off, uh, the okay. nails. And to remove any dirt, which is covering the external skin, skin of the, uh, of the fingers. Okay. That's, that's important. Thank you very much, Sheikhna. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us on this discussion on wudu. Inshallah, we'll have another discussion on the next episode. If you have any questions that you would like to send in in regards to ahkam, please send them to the contact details provided. And me and Sheikh, inshallah, will address them as soon as we can. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.